Hi guys. So nationals is coming up in just a few days, which means it is time for me to get back into training. So I've told a bunch of my friends who I talk to about speed puzzling all the time that I'm getting back into training and every single one of them replied with, but what does that mean exactly? <laughs> Basically, in the couple of weeks before nationals, I'm going to try to solve all of these puzzles. And I chose a lot of these for very specific reasons. Like every competition has its own little quirks that you have to prepare for. So before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to Ravensburger for sponsoring this video. They're also providing all of the competition puzzles for nationals and they are sponsoring my trip to nationals and they're going to be sponsoring the recap videos that I make about it. However, they did not provide all of these practice puzzles. All of these I either uh, bought with my own money or borrowed from a friend, except for uh, just one, which I'm gonna talk about later. So, okay, before I get into my speed puzzling time lapses, Let's just talk about what kinds of puzzles we can expect to see at the event. There's going to be nine puzzles used, six 500 piece puzzles, and three 1000 piece puzzles. All of the puzzles, even for the preliminary rounds, are unreleased, so no one will have done any of them before. But we do have a hint about four of the puzzles. So the organizers of the event released the names of four artists who are going to be there. So I think it's pretty safe to assume that their artwork is going to be on some of the competition puzzles. And the artist signings are right after each of the final rounds. So we can also probably assume which artist is going to be used for which round. So I'll talk about each illustrator's style as I do their puzzles. But for now, uh, let's get started with the speed runs. All right, it is officially time for my nationals prep to kick off. I've got all of my supplies ready. Let's do this. <laughs> so this first one that I did was just kind of a generic image uh, just to get back into the swing of speed puzzling. It took me a full 30 seconds just to get the pieces out of the box. Uh, you guys know that that part is not my strong suit. So I kept switching between doing the edge and doing the sorting. My strategy just seems to be jumping around as soon as I get stuck. So the birds in this image were colorful, they were easy enough. I had sorted out the koala, but I got very overwhelmed by all of the fur. Uh, the tree trunks went together surprisingly easily, so maybe I should have just started there. And it was tricky, um, I never actually had to do any shape sorting, so that's something I just don't really feel like there's anything specific I could have done to make this go faster. I think it's just a very difficult image since all of the bright colors are so spread out instead of being clustered together and you have so much fur. Oh man, I am so happy that since Nationals is all unreleased puzzles, that this definitely will not be one of them. That was brutal. My time was 1.17. Um, that, was, that was a really hard one. So the next one that I did is Mandela Blooms by Elspeth McLean, who is one of the featured artists at the competition. I borrowed this from Yvonne, and I was really nervous going into it because I saw 
Some very fast puzzlers get over an hour on this one, but I like grid images like this. I really like it when you can divide a puzzle up into little mini sections. So as you can see, I didn't do the entire edge at the beginning. I just started working in into those white dividing lines. And I started with the yellow and the green flowers, which were easy enough. But then this was my first time puzzling these mandelas. And I'm so happy I got to practice on that because you're literally just looking at pieces with all of these tiny, tiny circles. And you're just like, what am I even looking at? You have to look so closely to figure out the underlying pattern. But I actually think I did pretty well at them. You can see how when I move into the red sections, I actually started with the mandelas because once I got my head around it, I actually found those easier than the flowers. So I am so proud that I did this one in under an hour, especially because the full image isn't on the front of the box. Um, you're supposed to have a poster inside showing the full image, but this copy of the puzzle did not have that. So I'm gonna have to ask Yvonne about that. So I am just extra proud of my time um, knowing that I did this without knowing what the full image was gonna look like. The next one that I did is another one that I borrowed and I didn't even realize when I was doing it that this is another featured artist puzzle. This is a Christmas puzzle by Demelza Houghton. So this one felt very solid all the way through. It's kind of a busy image, but there are lots of different textures that are easy to identify, so I never felt stuck. I actually started with the tree, which was kind of surprising to me because that's a section I would usually end with, but it jumped out to me, so I just went with it. And I loved this one. I had a great time doing it. Uh, this is the kind of puzzle where you just have to keep referring to the box to get the placement of everything. So I think it would be a lot faster doing it for a second time, but I ended up at 56 minutes. So if this is the kind of image that we get at nationals, I'll be so happy. So next up is a circle of colors puzzle. Uh, this is one that I got as a prize from speedpuzzling.com. Now, since we just had circle puzzles at Worlds, I feel like we're probably not going to see them at Nationals, but it's always good to practice, you know, just in case, you never know. So I apologize for the lighting in this one. It was getting dark out, so I turned on the overhead lights, so there's a few more shadows going on. So I decided to sort the yellow and the purple up front, and I didn't sort the entire edge. This one was harder than it looked, and it requires a different strategy than other circle puzzles that I've done. Like the one that I did at Worlds, you could work out from the center, basically creating rings. But for this one, the colors were much more blended together. So you just had to identify textures and just make sections and then figure out how they connected to each other. Also, this was my third speed puzzle of the day. So about halfway through when I was getting to the reds, I was definitely thinking, I could be done now. <laughs> but it's always good to practice your puzzling endurance. So I ended up at just over an hour. Uh, this wasn't my absolute favorite, but it was fine. Next, uh, this is not the kind of image I would usually go for, but I picked it up at a puzzle swap because leading up to a competition, it is always good to just do 
as many puzzles in all different styles as you can. And as you saw at the last Nationals, we did get a nature photograph kind of like this. So I didn't do this one for speed. I was just doing it kind of slowly at a nice casual pace but I did run a timer just because I knew that you guys would be curious. Also, this would not be allowed in a competition, but I did use some extra light to just really illuminate those dark pieces, which really helped me see what was going on. So it wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, there were a lot of different textures going on, so it was definitely doable. It's just not an image I would usually gravitate towards. Okay, now we're getting serious. This is a big one. So this is Tree of Life by Elspeth McLean, the same artist who did the Mandela puzzle that I already solved. And I've looked at other people's times. This one looks really hard. So Tammy, Yvonne, and Alyssa all took over 90 minutes. Andrea Pang, who's one of the fastest puzzlers in the country, took, I think, an hour 14. And then Becca Taylor did it in just over an hour, which is very impressive compared to everyone else's times. So I guess I'm a little optimistic since I did really well on the last puzzle from this artist. But even still, I think this is going to be a long haul. I definitely think this is going to be over an hour. See, look at that already. These pieces are just made up of these little dots of color. So you don't get that much information per piece. So I am expecting a lot of shape sorting to happen. Okay, I started this one by doing a lot of sorting because the puzzle was broken up into a handful of distinct textures. I knew that I would start with the bottom red section and the tree trunk because those were the smallest sections and they went together totally fine. But then I started realizing that there seemed to be more tree pieces than background pieces. So even though my first instinct was to work from the middle of the tree out, I actually decided to do the background first and then work my way in. And it was definitely hard, but I actually think the Mandela's are really fun to put together. Like it is so satisfying when the pattern finally clicks. So by the time I got to the tree, I just kind of worked my way in. Uh, the leaf puzzles were the hardest part of this puzzle for me. So I did have to do a little shape sorting, but then I was able to finish it up. Oh man, everything hurts. Um, I'm a little dizzy from staring at all of this so intently for so long, but that took me an hour and 18 minutes. I was trying to beat an hour and a half and I did it. I am really proud of that time. Okay, so I do wanna do one more practice puzzle this morning. And I do have two more puzzles by this exact artist but uh, I don't feel like doing that. I wanna do something a little easier, <laughs> give myself a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna do this one instead. Now, full disclosure, uh, I did get this straight from Ravensburger, but they sent out this puzzle in a PR package to a whole bunch of influencers. So I figured it was okay to include this in my training. Also, I have done this puzzle before, like, a year or two ago, probably like two years ago. I did not do it for speed. I was just doing it slowly. So this will be my first time speed running it. Oh, and also it has the large pieces, which we're most likely not gonna get in the competition. So I'm gonna feel free to use this entire space, even though it's a couple inches wider than the actual competition space. Okay, so this one is not very difficult of an image. But the hardest part was just being so cramped 
from all of the pieces being so big. I didn't even finish the edge just because I had so many pieces blocking the way. But this image has tons of recognizable textures and objects, so I just jumped around a lot. Um, I felt like it wasn't too difficult. Oh, oh my gosh, I always do this. I pulled out all of the window pieces, and then I decided I didn't want to put them together. And so I actually left them to be the very last thing that I did. So I do think I was a little tired uh, doing this right after the Tree of Life puzzle. So I didn't feel as frantic, but actually maybe being a little more calm kind of helped me do it a little faster. I don't know. I ended up with 50, 55, and with all of the very difficult puzzles that I'm practicing with, I was so happy to have one that was well under an hour. So then I did another one just for fun, uh, not worrying about my time. I picked this up at a puzzle swap, and I started by sorting by color, and I was concerned because the sorting and the edge took me 45 minutes. But then once I had so much sorting done, it went so much faster. I got all of this done by three hours in. And then I was able to do the darker sections the next day in the daylight, which made them so much easier. So my time was under four hours, which I think is pretty good for just doing it casually. Okay, so this is where it's getting real. I finally taped off the exact amount of space that we'll have for the individual and the pairs puzzles. So for those rounds, we're gonna have half of a six foot by 30 inch table, which is plenty of space for a 500 piece puzzle. But for the pairs final, we'll be doing a 1000 piece puzzle and we're still only gonna have half of a table. This way they can have 100 pairs participate instead of only 50, which is great, but they specifically say in the FAQs that space will be limited, so it's important to practice and strategize. Unfortunately, my pairs partner, Tiffany, lives on the other side of the country, so I'm going to have to practice a 1,000 piece puzzle all by myself. I picked this one because it has a lot of color blocking, so I thought it would be relatively easy. Plus, it's by Nathaniel Mortensen, who is one of the featured artists at the event. So this one was more about practicing for the space constraints than going specifically for speed. And it was also about figuring out our tray strategy. For the pairs events, we're allowed to use two trays and they can be big. Like the ones that I'm using here aren't even at the maximum size. So I decided to try emptying the pieces directly onto the trays and doing a full color sort right up front. The sorting took me a full 16 minutes, which is always nerve wracking in a competition if you're still sorting and the person next to you is already puzzling, but you just have to trust the process. So this is one where I made a lot of islands of pieces since the colors were so differentiated. It took me until an hour in before I actually placed them in order. Then I did the edge. Uh, the edge was actually a lot more doable than I expected, so I kind of wonder if I could have gone faster if I had just done the edge first and gotten everything in place a little sooner. But this is where having the big trays gets really tricky 
because they were blocking the puzzle. So I ended up just sliding all of the pieces off of the tray, even though I didn't have a ton of extra space on the board. So this one took me two hours and 20 minutes, which I think is a pretty good time for a solo 1000 piece puzzle with limited space. And I really liked it. I think it's a really fun image. And I learned a lot for the next one that I did. <laughs> okay, I took a little bit of a break because this has been a lot of talking, but let's jump back into it. So this next one is by Demelza Houghton, who, as I said before, is one of the Nationals artists. I really just didn't like the giant trays in the last one. So this time I had small trays ready to go, but spoilers, um, I didn't end up using them at all. This time I just dumped out all of the pieces right onto the board and I did the edge first and I just kind of created a channel in all of the flipped pieces so that I could get the edge in place. But then I realized that the way that I oriented the edge was upside down from what I was looking at on the box. So I actually just flipped the box upside down as well, which I really don't think slowed me down. Um, if anything, it let me see the image as less of an image and more as areas of color and texture. And this time I did the puzzle sideways on the board, which leaves a lot more space over on the side for the pieces. And it means that both Tiffany and I would be able to reach all of those pieces. So it felt like a pretty steady pace, but this puzzle was just really hard because the color separation is a lot less clear. So it did take me quite a while. And even though the pieces were all bunched up over on the side, I never actually felt super cramped. Um, this one felt much more comfortable to me than trying to juggle those giant trays. So it took me two hours and 48 minutes, which is kind of a lot, but I'm really proud of myself for sticking with it and finishing it in one sitting, even though I was exhausted by the end of it. And that day that I did those two thousand piece puzzles, I really just wasn't feeling my best. So that's why I was doing puzzles more focused on strategy rather than the smaller ones for speed. Okay, I'm feeling so much better today. And I've been talking a big game about how I like the Mandelas and I think I'm good at them. So this puzzle will be the ultimate test. Look at that. That is crazy. So this is another Elsbeth McLean puzzle. Here you can see what the entire image is going to look like. Oh boy. Oh, I'm nervous. Now I'm getting nervous. So even though this puzzle was definitely tricky, what I like about the Mandelas is that it's not just about who can move their hands the fastest, which is a totally valid and impressive skill. But with these, it's more about looking closely and recognizing patterns and I don't know, my brain just loves these patterns. This is another one where, yes, it was hard, but I loved it. I was having so much fun looking for the little details to separate out each section. I mean, I was definitely following along with the picture a lot more than usual. Um, a few times you can see me pick up the poster to look really closely at it. But I've been seeing a lot of talk online about how some of the other puzzlers 
don't like the Mandalas and I'm over here like, I love them. I kind of hope we do get them in the competition. So it ended up taking me an hour 24, which is a lot for a 500, but I honestly don't think they're gonna give us one that's quite this hard for the actual competition because I think a lot of people just wouldn't finish and I don't think they want that. Although one more thing that I was thinking about is that these puzzles remind me so much of the Donuts Circle of Colors puzzle, which I did as practice right before Worlds. Um, I really enjoyed that one and I really enjoyed these. I just really like this style of puzzle. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is the last Elspeth McLean uh, puzzle that I have here for practice. And I will be honest, I'm kind of dreading this one. Look at how busy that is. I'm just gonna have to follow along entirely. See, what I'm realizing is that I like busy when the busyness makes a pattern. I really liked trying to identify each of these separate patterns by this, the individual specific elements. But with something like this, where they're all just kind of randomly placed next to each other and each element is so small, I, I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy this one. So I was talking to Tiffany and she was telling me that she hated the mandalas and she loved this puzzle. And I was just like, I am the exact opposite. As soon as I started the edge, I just kept getting stuck. I immediately knew that I was just in for a bad time. I was just so overwhelmed because there are a couple large elements, but everything else is just so small and randomly placed. I started with all of the yellow and the green and once I got those in place, I could work off of them and I could make progress. And I do think this would be really fun to do slowly, but for speed puzzling, it is just not my type of puzzle. So even though it took me less time than the previous one, it just felt so much more difficult. Okay, I just stopped for lunch, but now I'm gonna do one more speed puzzle today. So this is another one by one of the Nationals artists. I've been a little nervous for this. All of these flowers look so hard because they're all kind of the same color, but let's give it a go. Let's see if I can get one puzzle in under an hour today. <laughs> So this was my third speed puzzle of the day. So I was already pretty tired and sore going into it, but the middle was easier than I thought. Um, the piano and the rug went together with no problems. But then I got to the flowers. There were a couple like the roses and the fuzzy pink ones, which were easy to identify. But after that, a lot of it just looked exactly the same. So I did end up shape sorting, which definitely helped. I actually think I should have shape sorted a little bit earlier. So my time was just barely over an hour. I remember glancing over and I saw the timer at like 59.50 and I just knew that I was not gonna make it. So then I did one more thousand piece puzzle just for fun on the couch. This is a puzzle that we did for team practice right before Worlds. So I had done parts of it before, but not the entire thing. It's a really fun and colorful one. And again, I managed to do it in under four hours, which I think is totally solid for a casual puzzle. So the next one is this lighthouse puzzle, which was used at the Northeast Regional Championships last year. So here's what I'm thinking, stick with me for a minute. We can already predict that the four puzzles used in the finals 
will be puzzles by the featured artists. And I can totally see Ravensburger keeping four puzzles secret and out of the catalogs and just exclusive for this competition. Like that is exactly what they did for Worlds. But I'm skeptical that they would keep nine puzzles totally secret. So I would not be surprised if they used their custom puzzle printing service for the preliminary rounds. They've been doing this a lot for smaller, more local competitions, so they definitely have a process in place for printing like a hundred of each of these custom puzzles. So then the reason why I want to practice these is because the finish on the custom puzzles is a little different from the finish on their regular puzzles. Like it's a little more matte, uh, the pieces just feel slightly different. Also, I want to see if I can beat my time. So my first time on this one was 5531. Let's see if I can beat it. So the edge on this puzzle is very easy to identify. So that's where I started. I feel like I did this one in pretty much the exact same order as I did it the first time around. I started with the yellows and the reds and the lighthouse, uh, pretty much anything that's not blue. It did feel a bit disorganized at the beginning, but it got easier the further along I got. And I don't know, it just didn't seem as difficult this time as I remember it feeling the first time. So my time was 50-32, which means I beat my first time by five whole minutes. And I just barely beat Michaela's winning time. So then, I decided to do one more thousand piece puzzle. I had talked to Tiffany on the phone about our tray strategies. So I wanted to do one more, forcing myself to use the smaller trays. And if this looks familiar, it is the puzzle that was used at the team's event at the previous nationals. However, one of my teammates kept that puzzle, so I haven't done it since the last Nationals a year and a half ago. Also, since it's pretty color blocky, I figured it was a good one to compare to the Magical Potions puzzle, where I had used those giant trays. And both of them are by Nathaniel Martinson, who, as I said, is one of the featured artists. So I started by just sorting out the edge and the blue and purple. Once again, I created a channel through the flipped pieces, and then I just moved those out of the middle of the puzzle as I went along. This one felt a little more cramped, so I actually was really happy to have the trays since I could put together a whole section before moving it into place. I do think these trays were a little small though. So I'm gonna cut some more that are kind of a happy medium between the giant ones and then these smaller ones. But overall, I really liked doing this puzzle entirely on my own and getting to do all of the parts that my teammates did the last time. My time was two hours and 19 minutes. So I did just barely beat my time from the Magical Potions puzzle. Oh man, you guys. So I have one more puzzle that I wanna do for my nationals training and Sure enough, it's the one that I won second place with at Nationals in 2022. They just happened to pick a puzzle that is my perfect image. Um, I love this one so much. So I'm gonna try to beat my time from Nationals and also try to beat my time from when I did this one again right before Worlds. 
So I'm gonna try to get an under 50 minute time. Let's see if I can do it. So I did this one in kind of a weird order. I separated the edge, but instead of doing the entire edge, I started with just the top and the bottom, and I actually did the sky pretty early in this puzzle instead of leaving it until last. With this being the third time I've done this puzzle, I never felt stuck. I always had a new thing to work on, and I felt like I was pretty consistently placing pieces even if I was kind of jumping around all over the place. The busy buildings, uh, once again, gave me a little trouble, but that's what I think is the hardest part of this image. So I left it until last, but uh, yeah, this felt like a really solid puzzle solve. All right, I haven't looked at my time. Let's see, let's see. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh just barely under 50 minutes. Oh, I'm so proud of that. Okay, guys, literally just this morning, like just a couple hours ago, Yvonne posted her own solve of this puzzle. If you remember, at the previous Nationals, she beat me by less than a minute, and this time she beat me by 13 seconds. <laughs> 13 seconds. This is like deja vu all over again. <laughs> also, if you look at our two time lapses, we did it in essentially the opposite order. So it just goes to show that you can get a very similar time doing a puzzle a completely different way. So, Okay, that was everything that I did as practice for nationals. So here are all of the puzzles arranged by my finish time so that you can see which ones were easier and which ones were the most difficult. And like, I keep wondering why I'm so tired. And then I realize that I have done 17 puzzles in the last two weeks. And that's not even it, because I did two more for online contests, and then I also did another couple uh, just for fun without filming them. So I spent 31 and a half hours uh, puzzling just for this video. I'm actually filming this a couple days out from the event, so the plan is to take a couple days off from speed puzzling, and then I can go into the event feeling totally refreshed and ready to puzzle again. So, like, this was a lot, and I keep seeing people asking how to get better at speed puzzling. And yes, practicing like this is definitely part of it, but I really think the biggest part is just consistently doing a lot of puzzles. We're, what, like 80 days into the year, and I have already done 68 puzzles this year. Last year, in 2023, I did 250 puzzles, and 117 of them were just for fun and not for videos. So every time you do a puzzle, you're just building that muscle memory of how to identify the piece that you're looking for, how to handle the puzzle pieces. And so when it's time to compete, you're just doing the exact same thing, only faster. And so you already know how to do it. So in a way, I have been training for these competitions for over 30 years. Now, you may have noticed that in this video, I skipped one of the featured artists, Dean McAdam. I actually did a couple puzzles by him as practice for Worlds, so I felt like I was already pretty solid on his illustration style, but 
I am just so happy that I had a chance to practice these mandalas by Elspeth McLean. I feel like now I have a much better handle on them than I did in the first one that I tried. Also, while we were on the phone, Tiffany and I were looking at all of uh, Demelza's previous puzzles and strategizing what we would do if it was super color blocky versus more organic. So I feel like I'm about as prepared as I possibly can be going into this event. So, okay, if you wanna watch, Nationals will be live streamed. Here is the full schedule, and I highlighted which rounds I'll be a part of, um, assuming that I make it into all of the finals. For my individual preliminary, I was looking down the list of all of the puzzlers who are in that round. It's arranged alphabetically, so I was going down being like, all right, all right, um, nothing too crazy here. And then I got to Andrea Peng, Jean Reuter, and Becca Taylor. <laughs> and I'm just like, maybe I can get fourth. <laughs> I'm aiming for fourth. <laughs> So you can watch the live streams this weekend on the USA Jigsaw YouTube channel. I'll have the link right down below. And um, I know that for the live streams at Worlds, there were some issues of people spamming the chat. So I just want to say, please be supportive and respectful of all of the puzzlers. I promise you are going to get so much footage of me once I make my recap videos. So let me know down in the comments if you've done any of these puzzles and uh, which ones you would most like to do. I'll have links to all of these puzzles down in the description if you want to get any of them and try to race my times. Thank you again to Ravensburger for sponsoring this video. Um, your code word for the comments will be San Diego. And wish me luck. I'll see you at Nationals.